Hello, my name is Marisol Gonzalez Sterling, and I'm going to introduce to you the world of vibrational light and color, as well as vibrational color therapy. I want to introduce to you that the uh, most simplest experiments can discover the most amazing things. Like here, there, with the prism, we're trying to f see the difference of temperature between the colors. There was no difference of temperature between the colors, but there was two degrees going up and two degrees coming down outside in the thermometer outside of the rays of the color. So this way, we discovered there was a lot more than a visible color in these electromagnetic spectrum that shows us that everything is vibration and everything's related. Here we see in the little gray spot on the left hand side that is the s audible sound from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. 20 cycles per second is what we could do if we moved our finger 20 times in a second, and that's called hertz. Well, after the vis the audible sound comes the ultrasound, and then afterwards all the ra radio waves that are used by the telephones, by the radios, by the television, and that goes for millions and billions of cycles per second. Then and we have another gray part on the top side to the right, which is actually the visible light. And uh, after the visible light, we have the ultraviolet light. And uh, from there, we have X-rays and gamma rays, which is enormous amount of millions and billions of cycles per second. We have to take into account that our cells in the eyes vibrate at 500 billions, 512 zeros, cycles per second to see the color yellow, an amazing number. We see here in this graphic that the atmosphere of our planet does not allow for the X-rays and gamma rays to come in, and it actually cuts a certain percentage of the ultraviolet light as well. We know that with the prism we can see the colors of the rainbow. We divide the light into colors. This is what astrophysicians do to see what composition each of the mm, planets or stars that we see. So it means that uh, there are some black lines in the rainbow that are absorption lines that will that belong to the different elements of the table of elements. So then we if have something with light, we can always analyze the light and know what is composed of, what is the chemistry that composes something that is burning that has light. So light tells us what the biochemistry is. Here we have the full spectrum of the sun in the color bars on the left hand top corner. And we have next to it on the right side up above the fluorescent light that has too much yellow and down below on the left the uh, incandescent light that we normally have in all our light bulbs that has too much orange and here we have the full spectrum on to the right spectrum light bulbs that one can buy we see here now the waveforms of the uh, different colors and you see that the red is uh, opposing the cyan next to it and below the uh, blue indigo is opposing the yellow it's just where one comes up the other one goes down and in the middle we have the green and magenta as double waves because actually they come from two rays which I will explain further in um, the video of acupuncture, how that happens. But uh, it seems like uh, these are completely opposites, the shapes and the forms of the waves in the complementary colors as we see the red and blue and the violet and the yellow and the actually the magenta and the green. The purpose of this video is going to focus on understanding the complementary of colors as a vibrational reality, which we will follow through on the next part of this video. 
And something else we need to know is that color happens because of the electrons jumping from one orbit to the other. If the jump of the quantum is really large and it goes all the way to the center, then it sprays with ultraviolet. If it's uh, the reds, they stay the jump of the electrons in the outer orbits and uh, it becomes red. And then we have seven orbits and that's why we have seven bands of colors in the rainbow because there's only seven orbits. I have some very large prisms with which I have studied everything that I'm bringing to you now. And here I have a photograph that I finally got with uh, the black that you see is a white background of a wall. And it was very difficult to reach the intense colors we have here, but I finally got it. And we can see that also we have um, two rainbows, meaning coming from the two prisms I have. And that gives a very amazing fusion of colors. When two rainbows mix, you have the other colors. Now I would like to show you a video on how to see the complementary colors. And here I had to trick the camera um, showing the half of the window, the light outside. And that's why it's that way. Um, now we, we see the rainbow and uh, we're going to put a filter in front to show uh, what happens to the complementary colors. You see we put the red filter, the completely green disappears. If now we put an or a less red filter, the greens also disappear and the blues. Now the orange will show you that definitely the blues disappear. Then uh, if we show an, a yellow, we see that the violet blue violets disappear and uh, if we show, show a green the violets disappear completely if now we see with the turquoise we see the red, certain part of the red that goes and here with the blue cyan then the orange goes completely and here we see it even more that the orange goes completely we see the red but not the orange now with the with the more indigo the yellow disappears from the rainbow and here, uh, it, the the greens disappear. And now with the violet, with the magenta, this one, with the greens will disappear. We have seen perfectly well how complementary colors is a reality. It's a physical reality that one color will counteract and make the other one disappear. This is what vibration physicism is doing. And then we have to take into account that sunlight and color is a biochemistry that even the bottles that have medicines will not so every color that comes into our eyes is generating biochemistry change and this is what goes directly into the hypothalamus and then from there it will affect the hormones all the neurotransmitters and enzymes of the body we have to know that the cones will uh, ha that are responsible for color the cones inside the eyes vibrate at normal speeds 400 billion cycles per second to see the color red 500 billion cycles per second is 512 zeros to see the color yellow and what happens is that we put intensely one color on the eyes the the pigment will exhaust itself in the cones and then it will start producing the pigment of the other color the complementary color and that will affect all the hormones neurotransmitters and everything that would need that wavelength of color the brain is so adaptable to the environment that you can see here the eagle has two phobias to be able to see the rabbit so closely that different from us that you see it on the left side of the rabbit then we see on the right side of the screen here a horse which actually can has very good lateral vision because the eyes are on the sides and then he can see quite a bit on the on the back so he can see the the rider then we see the carpenter uh, bird that uh, actually picks on the on the tree and needs to look in the back so he has a wonderful vision in the back then here we see other animals and then we see it all the way on the left side bottom the pupil of the cat's eye that is so long that he can always see what he wants to jump and reach up 
then we see on the right side the fish on the top you see that he doesn't have a pupil on the top so he was always looking at the bottom that's why he can be he can be catch by people that he doesn't see up above i will continue talking more about how to do therapy with this uh, light and color in the next video <laughs>